soon as we can find them, dude, we get out of this point. There's a cat row back there that I think they're on. Opening day out here for Hunter's muzzleloader. Oh, we already seen two bulls. I, I kid you not, it's December right now. I kid you not, we get out of the car and we start hearing cows mewing, and I'm like, oh my gosh. No, nah, and then we're trying to see if we can find these. There's a bunch of brush next to us. We're trying to see if we can find these elk. And I'm not joking, you know, bull bugles down in the unit, you know, December. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, no way. Well, we get up here. There's just two spikes, so I don't know if there was a bigger bull or the spikes were big one. I have no idea. How was your opinion? I don't even know. <laughs> what do you think of the big bull? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounded like. <laughs> so Jake, what's going on dude? So last time we came to the exact same spot and the elk were calling and there was a bull that bugled. Right. And it's December. So this time, this this morning, I remember I was like, I was like, all right, I gotta bring my bugle tube, right? Just to try it. We get out here, we glass, see nothing at all, don't hear anything, right? So I'm like, all right. <laughs> so we're just about leaving, I rip a bugle, right? A couple cow calls. Here's these elk in the bottom, start chirping. One bull kind of let out like a half a bugle. I think it's the same spike that got a wimpy bugle. Um, so they're in the bottom of this, and there's a very steep creek that you have to cross, and we don't feel like crossing it or going all the way around. 
there's a BLM gate on the other side of this creek that comes out above that. So we're gonna go down there. Um, we have a little bit more time until the thermal's coming up. And I think they're in the bottom of this in a flat. So we're playing a risky move. And we're going all the way around to this BLM gate parked there and hike in. Hopefully the elk were still calling as we were leaving. So hopefully fingers crossed we can get in there and they're still in the bottom of it. So I stayed back when I spotted those elk to let Jake and Hunter get on a <clears throat> on a um, stock on him. Just heard a gunshot up here, and uh, just praying he got him. Well, I seen two. I think it was two cows, and we figured we've seen elk in here in the past, and we figured um, there'd be more than just those two cows. And they're on this little bench, and I let them hike up there, and I just heard a gunshot. So let's pray he got him. After the shot took place, me and Hunter followed the elk, looking for blood and looking for Hunter's bull. At this point, our hopes were high, but falling fast. With how dark the timber was and the smoke out of his muzzle litter, it was very hard to tell if he had hit this bull. We stuck with it for hours and put in some miles, eventually tracked down the herd again. We got within 40 yards of the herd, where we saw Hunter's bull unharmed and perfectly fine. After editing and reviewing the video at home, we find out Hunter hit the tree just a little bit to the right of that bull. We had a lot of fun on this hunt, and we unfortunately had to leave for his brother's hunt the following week. So this ended up being one of our last days out in the elk woods.